Hello and welcome to the Hobby CNC with Dave show. Uh, glad y'all tuning in tonight. Let me bring on my uh, crew we got here tonight. We got uh, Solar Man's on location again tonight, looks like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, welcome, Ryan. Vacation uh, location. <laughs> vacation location. We got my buddy Russ hanging in here with us tonight, as well as. Mr. Sean is in the house. How you doing, Sean? Doing great, thank you. Rob Schuster's here with us tonight. Howdy. Always good to have you join us. And of course, my old buddy Paul. From, uh, Howdy. Paul's Missy Workshop. So how are y'all doing? Very good. Anybody? Uh, anybody got any uh, big news, uh, Ryan? I guess you probably don't have a shop update since you're on location, but you got anything you want to talk about or plug or? Um, just wanted to thank everybody for the birthday wishes last day, yesterday. <laughs> that was very kind. Yeah, I have a shame on you. <laughs> yeah, that uh, another another trip around the sun. Is yep, more thing? gray hair. Yeah. yeah. All right. What about you, Mr. Meadows? You have anything, uh, any words of wisdom you want to share with us tonight before we get started? You're you're muted. If you. <laughs> All right. I guess. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll leave it at that. All right, Paul, what do you what do you got for us? You got any uh, anything going on you want to talk about? I have a lot of good intentions. Yeah. Being yeah, uh, I, rent, made anything with your one infinity or your 3D printer I've, or any, anything at all going on? I got I got a lot of good intentions. I even got my T track <laughs> so I can put my new spoil board nice. on. But it, okay. it all sits in a pile there. Okay. All right. Well, it's not going to put itself on there, you know. <laughs> it's moved to one central location, at least there, Paul. Yeah, and it, okay. it was some quarter twenty bolts, so I can make some hold downs. I mean, like I said, I got a lot of good intentions. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Well, I know. I know. Uh, Rob has got some stuff because he he was one of the few people that sent some pictures. In fact, he was the first one to send me something. So. We're going to be talking about his stuff uh, a little later. Uh, what about you, Sean? You got uh, anything you want to want to talk about or share? Yeah, with sure. you? yeah, I got a couple of things. Fun part is my daughter and I. We've been working on these for Halloween, I'm teaching her a lesson with this. She's learning how to uh, run the uh, the nailer, the the pin nailer and stuff, which is fun. And she wants to buy a flute, and I explained to her, well, we'll make these and sell them, and the proceeds from this will go to a flute. Okay. So hopefully hey, Sean, do, are, hmm? do those have an open bottom, and you just set yes. them over the tea light? Exactly, exactly. Okay. So we've been having fun slowly working on that. But in the process, I keep, I keep as you can see, the little notch. This one's good. <laughs> that one's really good. And this one's missing the whole end. But where is it? <laughs> so I think we've all been there. And in the process, I've been playing around and I came up with uh, a new hold down. So I threw this up in CAD and I got the files if anybody wants them. And, okay, uh, show, them, show them the back end of that because it's got the... Uh, this the right here? No, the, the part, the little riser block part. Oh. This. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to find a, a little block to stick under them. Yeah. And the, the idea is I do a lot of, you know, half inch to three quarter inch. So I just wanted enough to where it would sit pretty close to level. So I wouldn't have an up a canter to it. Okay. All of right. Very good. I haven't hit it yet. <laughs> Soon. Okay. So now you're, you're going to make those STLs files available for somebody that yeah. wants to to print their own is that the give me one second and if you don't mind tell them how to contact you because i'm sure there will be somebody who oh it did not go in the link or did it yeah it's on there you got a dropbox link yes. so. 
It's the Dropbox. No big deal. Just oh, go so up the there files are already in the Dropbox. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good deal. Good deal. So there you go, folks. Um, if you want to get the STL file and print yourself some yeah. of this. And it uses it uses the uh, quarter 20 T-nut, uh, three-quarter inch. So, and all I did was heat it up with uh, a soldering iron and push it into place. Okay. That's the kind with the prongs, I guess, right? Yes, the four prongs. All righty. Very good. So we have the uh, Sean's Dropbox link in the chat there. If anybody wants to hit him up with that, uh, be sure and do that. Yeah, real simple 3D print if you want or use it on your CNC. We've got... Uh, JR, man, I'm telling you, he's something else, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Sits us up with a yeah, He's early cat. on it today. <laughs> yeah, he didn't waste no time. We're just getting going. Uh, JR, we might, the show might suck tonight. And you, <laughs> we did, <laughs> didn't even have to earn that one. Yeah, he's putting the pressure on now. Yeah, yeah. All righty. We appreciate you, buddy. That's like paying for the prime rib before you get the salad. We, uh, yeah, yeah, we, uh, we appreciate you. All right, a couple other things. Of course, uh, I know why uh, everybody's wanting to know what the hashtag is. <laughs> We've got some folks that just don't give up. It's going to be something different every, uh, every week. Uh, how do you, let's see, how do you say that name? Is it Logrophobus? <laughs> I don't know how you say the LGRFBS, but uh, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the new... Thing. Let me show you. I've got uh, got my instructions from Cody earlier today, and we're going to be giving away this one eighth tapered ball nose. And this is the little nice. B. Last week it was the big B. So this week it's going to be the one eighth tapered ball nose, which is the, oh, yeah. the, the little B. B. So that nice. means that the hashtag. It's going to be hashtag little b. So make sure you put that in the chat. I already have the uh, the uh, little giveaway tool running over here, so it should uh, start collecting those as they uh, as they come in here. Uh, and I'll make sure it's catching them. Yep, it's climbing. Okay, so that's uh, that's going. So yeah, hashtag little b will be the, uh, the thing here to put in. And we will show that probably a couple of times tonight. Of course, the drawing will be towards the end like it always is. Otherwise, y'all would leave. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I'm no dummy. You, know. you just basically just told them to come back in 45 minutes and skip this part of the show. <laughs> yeah, well, they might do that, too. We'll see. Um, but uh, and if we if we get a huge drop-off, we'll do the drawing. How about that? We'll fool yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Guess what I got in the mail today? Oh, Speaking yeah. of Big B last week's. Yeah, oh, sweet, ain't it? Okay, sweet. Haven't tried it yet, of course, but. You mean you haven't tied a piece of leather and put it around your neck? And... <laughs> it's pretty. It's uh, it's yeah, it's better than some of the things you see people wearing nowadays. True. I've got one more thing I'm going to talk about, and y'all probably going to think I'm crazy, but you know that never stops me before. So today is. August the 20th. So we're still, what, a little over four months away from Christmas. Mm -hmm. But every year about this time, usually in August, September or so, I will start mentioning yeah. the mm. CNC Christmas Challenge. And I think, I don't know for sure, but I think maybe there may have been some confusion in past. I think when they hear GAT and CNC, they think, oh, well, it's it's for people that have a GAT and CNC. And no, that's not the case. It's an open challenge for anybody who wants to, you know, create a Christmas themed project, 
shoot a little video. Uh, I don't, I don't have the rules and all that made up for this year. I'll probably just go to my website, copy what I did last year, whatever. Um, but you know, make it a long enough video that it's, you know, we can see what the heck it's you're making and what it's about and stuff like that. Usually about five minutes or so, I think is what I had last year. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about that. And I'll try to remember to talk about it every, uh, every Saturday night from here on out. And I know you people are probably thinking, well, what's he talking about that for already? It's, you know, Christmas is a long way off, but believe it or not, I always get messages from people that say, well, man, I just run out of time. You know, and there's no excuse. You know, nobody's got an excuse. I mean, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But I don't want to hear any excuses. But anyway, so uh, you'll be seeing more about that on the, uh, the website. I may even go ahead and throw that in there. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, talk more about that on Saturday nights as well. So anyway, if anybody has any questions, feel free to... Uh, Put them in the chat, Ryan. Have you got any of them? Ran um, the uh, main thing right now is that uh, Ronald Cool got his compression bit from uh, from Cody. So, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so Cody does send them out. We have confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cody's a good guy. That's the other bit I got in the mail today, actually. So okay. I can confirm they sent him out. Okay, well, let's, uh, while we're waiting on any questions that might uh, pop in here, let me get the, uh, you know, I just posted on the thing, uh, I guess, on Facebook and on social media and stuff. You know, if anybody want, had some pictures, if you've done a, a cool project or something and wanted to send in some pictures, we'd do a little show and tell to, to kill some time tonight and I've only had like three people send me stuff. So, but I'm going to go ahead and get these queued up and we'll go through some of these. Uh, if my computer. While you're, while you're doing that, Dave, uh, um, Alan Hefferman had a uh, question for Sean okay. uh, about the uh, boxes behind them. Uh, what, what kind of tea lights are you using for them? Uh, I'm using these little battery powered tea lights, Amazon specials or whatever. Nice. I'm going to get some brighter ones, um, but these are the ones that glow orange. And they literally just sit up on the bottom. You just set the uh, lantern on top and it lights up the inside. Cool. Or you could be daring and light a candle, I guess, but I wouldn't do it. <laughs> you how, long the, how long do the batteries last? Uh, if you leave it on, well, this one's barely flickering and it's been on for about three and a half days. Oh, I don't, I don't think you can see it in this light, but it's, it's barely lit, but yeah, not too bad. And if you're only using it for a few hours a night or overnight. Yeah, they do a good job. Yeah. I'm impressed. Okay. Um, oh, we had another question there, but I guess that's a, a comment. Earl's talking about he got his new G3 CNC in motors installed, and his My Sweetie 110 volt will be here tomorrow. Went with the 110 volt so I can have it on battery backup for power outage. Nice. Nice. Okay. Um, well, here, let, Dave, Dave Clements has the question that we all want to know for <laughs> Squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> when, when are you going to post a video about, about, about the 3018? As soon as I can get the last few uh, minutes of it edited, I've got a lot of video shot of the thing setting right, right here in front of me. But uh, I just got to shoot a little bit more uh, video. Uh, Ty says, "What happened to the AM show?" LOL. Yeah, sometimes I, when I'm setting up these shows, I forget to set the AM and PM. And I came out here 
today and it was late morning. It was already after 9 a.m. And I saw <laughs> when I because I always turn this computer on and let it run all day so that all the updates and all that stuff can get done before I get ready to do this tonight. And then I realized there was some people already in the chat. and stuff. So whenever you see a, a, a thing on Saturday the, in the uh, thumbnail says 9 p.m., but the other thing says it's scheduled for 9 a.m., you just know that old Dave screwed up. And sometimes I do the same thing with the coffee sessions. I'll set it for 9 p.m. or something by mistake or whatever. But, hey, I'm getting old, you know. So uh, I do the best I can. All right, let me uh, let me share a screen here. We're going to talk about this one photo here that I got. This is a photo that, let's see if I can, oh, yeah, I can get it a little bigger. This is a photo, and I'm, I'm reading off my phone here because this was sent to me in a text message. But this is from Mary, who I saw out in the chat uh, earlier. Uh, she says, I haven't been on the CNC a lot lately because of home improvement projects. But I did make this as a gift for our pastor. It says I used Cody's 60-degree downcut V-bit. That would be the, what do they call it? The groovy Jenny, I guess would be what that, mm -hmm. yeah. what that one is. It says it is made from select pine that she sprayed with several coats of paint. And she had aura mask on it because she thought she was going to use a, let's see, contrasting color, but didn't. It cut very nice, no chip out, and the aura mask stayed without peeling oh nice piece that looks real good very nice crisp yeah, really clean looking uh text there and of course i have to ask was your aura mask four or five years old like mine or <laughs> or was it fairly recent but uh but yeah that's uh that's that looks good right there okay let's uh Man, I got so much stuff. It's crowded down here. I got so many people on here tonight. I have to scroll this. There it is. Right there. Okay. All right. Let me get another one queued up here. Like I said, we did. I didn't get. Uh, didn't get. Uh, but about three people send me some pictures of stuff. And, and I've mentioned this. I probably don't mention it enough but uh anytime anybody does something cool you know whether it be like i said we you know everybody has or, or not everybody but most people have 3d printers and lasers and you know all this kind of stuff cnc routers and whatever so if you've made a cool project and want to show it off send me pictures just go to my website if you don't know my email address and, uh, you know, use the contact form there. That, that way you can get my email address. Send me the picture. We can make a little show and tell pretty much anytime. Uh, and if we don't have time to show it one night, we'll show it a, a, another night. So uh, let's see who we got next here. Right. Let me get, okay, I got Six photos here. Let me get these queued up here. And I didn't really get a lot of uh, details about these, but I think uh, this is from Lou, so I, Lou Thomas. So I think he's out there in the uh, chat as well. So if you want to chime in, Lou, and tell us a little bit about these, but this is the first one I've got. Oh, oh shoot! You can see some uh, CNC oh, cool. on the edges. Ooh. It's pretty cool. That almost looks to me. That looks too pretty to use right there. <laughs> it's really nice. I think there's. Uh, that is well done. Yeah, here's a another shot. 
That's kind of spiffing up the old uh, vice thing, and I like that. Even a 3D design on the device. Wow. Yeah. You hate to use it. Wow. <laughs> you don't want to mess it up. You just yeah. got to smack it with a hammer right now, and then it's already <laughs> it's ready to go. Yeah. I, li I like that I he's got a wheel on that end. That's, that's kind of different, too. Oh, right down to the, the wheel. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's pretty yeah, nice. That's really good. Okay, let me keep, uh, let's see. Okay, Lou is saying that that is a table saw topper hand workbench. Okay. Oh, it's a small, okay. So you're saying it's a smaller unit? Table top? Yeah, yeah. so it looks like it, goes, it sits on top of his table saw and then... It's a solid wood top to do his hand cleaning and stuff. That's, That's pretty sweet. Nice. Good idea. Okay. Good use of space. Yeah. All right. Let me go ahead and flip through some more pictures here. Okay. Here's another beauty right here. I like this. Oh, that's sweet. Um, I like the color of that stain in the font. Yeah. 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 That finished off really nice. Aunt Betty's going to be happy. <laughs> I would say so, yeah. That is very nice. Yeah, Lou says he can get the clamps on and off in 30 seconds with that. Oh. Hey, Dave, uh, going back to Lou's uh, advice. Okay. Um, at, it's all wood. There's no metal. That is awesome. Yeah, it's wooden screws. Yeah. Yeah. That's some craftsmanship. That is cool. Uh, and he says it, it comes on and off in 30 seconds. So yeah. That, that That's pretty awesome. I dig that. We'd like to see a little video of that. Yeah. Lou, do you have a, uh, a, a YouTube channel by chance? If you do, let us know what it is. So I can get one of the guys to put a put your link in there or something. All right, and if you would, Luke, can you tell us a little about this? Oh, I guess he has here. Hold on here. It says not stain clear coat on aged cedar. So. Okay. I thought it was cedar. Oh, that's natural Easter then. cedar. Yeah. Wow. That's very nice. Just clear coated. Cool. Very mm. nice. I like that. All right, let's see what, uh, okay, this looks like a little box with some uh, splines in the corner. Nice. I'm also digging the carving in the background there. You guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty slick. Is that a birdhouse process? Bird I was just wondering the same thing. Um, yeah, might be. I was, yeah, that maybe it has birdhouse and they fly in and out of his mouth. Maybe now on his box. Okay, I see it's oak, but I wonder what the dark is. Is it maple? Lou said he doesn't have a YouTube channel at the moment, but he, he'd like to try it. I don't know. I'm assuming that's what he meant. Yeah, you must have you yeah. got your mic flipped up, Russ. Nope. Because I can't hardly hardly hear you hmm. when you talk. Let me see if I can uh, crank up your volume a little bit here. Oh, yeah, let's turn that off. Say something now, Russ. Something now, Russ. Okay, yeah. You tell <laughs> me. I max you out on your volume, buddy. Okay, kind of man. Soft in the night, looks like. Okay, Lou says, uh, seeing... Oh, yeah. C cut, yes. And yes, that is birdhouse. Very oh, cool. Wow. Awesome. Oh, it says purple heart is what the splines are. Okay. Ah. Yeah. That's sharp. Alrighty, let's see. Was that the last? Nope, here's something. Okay, now these I think he's I think he said these were uh Laser. ceramic tile, if I remember right, Lou. It was done with a laser i think wow wait and see if he 
comments there. I think that's what I what he told me. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that came out very nice. So speaking of Purple Heart, I got a quick story while we're waiting for uh, Lou to respond. So the other week when we were down here at the vacation spot, the um, uh, we went down to Charleston, South Carolina, and there's this place down there off of Market Street. It's like a half a mile long building of like vendors and stuff like that. And there was a guy there selling uh, um, guitar shaped uh, uh, cutting boards. And the one had uh, Purple Heart and Ebony and stuff in there. And, I was like, oh man, these are these are really nicely done, and and he's like, oh yeah, you know, this one is you know the maple and wall, you know, maple blah blah whatever, and this one is, I was like, oh, that, you know, it's purple heart and that's ebony, and he's like, oh, you need your, you know, your all your your wood species. I said, yeah, I'm a CNC guy too, <laughs> and, and he just winked at me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Lou confirms that's uh, some laser engraved tiles. That's his. What kind of laser do, is he using? Uh, no chance. Well, let's ask him. Man. Yeah, laser, and if he used uh, like a Cerakote or uh, the flat white primer. This is also a ceramic tile. Wow. Nicely done. I don't know. Uh, and Lou, while you're typing in to tell us about your laser, I'm curious as to what size tiles. Are these the 4x4 four four or the 6x6? Six six or I'm thinking maybe that clock one might be a little bigger. I don't know. That's some detail there. Okay. It says white paint. White paint. Okay. And uh, maybe he'll tell us a little about his laser. Viking, okay, I love it. Fours. Okay, four by four mm -hmm. tiles. Okay. It's like pulling teeth, man. I'm on pins and needles here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really digging that clock. That looks like Thor with the raven. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah that's pretty yeah. cool. It is. Okay. Tour. Oh wow. He's got an O Tour Laser Master 2. Okay. Look, Very Dave, nice. he got it to do something you couldn't get it to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i well I've got the whole bunch of tiles. I just haven't uh in fact my O Tour is sitting right over there next to my little 3018. <laughs> Well, we'll have somebody else in that seat next week, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's now on permanent vacation. <laughs> okay, I think that uh, I think that's all of us. Let's back up and recap these, though, because these are really all. I like that clock. That clock yeah. is nice. Good picture of his granddaughter there. Nice little box. That's gorgeous right there. I love the color of that wood. Yeah, that cedar yeah. looks so nice. Yeah. And, of course, that uh, workbench thing is just awesome. Yeah. Very, uh, very nice work, Lou. Thanks for sending those in. Okay, he's added a, another message here. The clock is an Odin with Runic. Runic, yeah. Clock, 24-hour system. Okay. Wow. Okay. All righty. Well, thank you so much for sending those in. I appreciate it. And now let me get these other ones queued up. And I'm not going to have to do any talking on this next one because these next ones were sent in by my buddy Rob, who's on the panel tonight. <laughs> I'm just going to click through the pictures and let him do the talking. That works. Okay. Does it, I guess it doesn't matter. They're, they're kind of in an order, starting with the badge. Okay. And then they go one through six. And I sent one more that's not numbered. Yeah, yeah. And I've got it. It comes next, and then the rest of them are the tray. Right. So we'll, just, we'll, just, uh, we'll take them as they fall here, and you can explain uh, explain everything. 
If I can get this computer to bring it out. Come on, baby, you can do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, tell us what we're looking at here, Rob. Okay, I'm making uh, badges or just my logo for drums. And that is Walnut, and it's got some good character kind of between the heartwood and the sapwood. I kind of liked that. It's probably inferior technically, but I liked it anyway. And a lot of detail carving I'm doing. So I coated it with a thin layer of epoxy to start with so it would soak in. Because I've had problems with chipping out little letters normally. So I figured this might help. And it did help. I've done it a few times in the past. So I just put a thin layer of epoxy on and waited a day and go to the next step. And <laughs> okay. Now, before I click off this picture, I want to point out yep. the, <laughs> the immaculate clamps he has here. <laughs> It's so nice to see somebody else that has clamps that look like mine. Sometimes I need a short, quick clamp, so I just get on this bandsaw and cut a piece with a hole in the middle, and <laughs> they get yeah. tweaked all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's I'll, really. <laughs> yeah, I'll I just cut. Love seeing them when they're uh, kind of shortened a little bit. Yeah, they don't stay pristine very long. Yeah. Okay, here we'll go to the next one. Okay, so I skimmed off the little bit of epoxy on top. You can see. If wasn't quite level there. That's okay. Then I carved in the uh, the snake head, and that's just a 30 degree V bit. Did all that with, and then I'll eventually fill that with black epoxy to get the first color. Okay. Now is this the the snake head, Rob? Is that kind of your logo? Yeah, I called my drums Sidewinder, which I don't know. You've got Sidewinder. Right. I, didn't really, I didn't steal it from you, but I am from Arizona, so Sidewinder drums is what I call them. So okay. His next set of drums will be called Gatton. Well, <laughs> so I poured the uh, I poured the pack black, and then I cut in the uh, this will be white that I'll fill that with in a second. And Dave can probably tell us what font that is down there. Uh, yeah, I did steal that. that. I did steal that one. So. It does look a little familiar. Yeah, it it works. I liked it a lot, so I stole that one too. So I just again a thirty degree bit and carved it out nice and slow and very little chipping or in fact no chipping even that little what islander dot in the r that's the part i was always worried about it chipped out on one or two of those but it uh gosh so it the just, resin really helps it really did it just that is tiny that whole thing is only 2.4 inches tall i think the whole badge so okay. that, font, that font is small a quarter, a quarter inch maybe i don't know I, yeah, I guess I could pull up my computer right now if I wanted to, but yeah, it is a small font and it it came out nice. Okay, uh, let's see. You ready for me? To move sure. To yeah, and the next one that's just I want to flood it with the white epoxy, uh, pearl mica powder, pearl mica powder. I like. Yeah, yeah I like pearl that. Pearl good. That's sweet. And that's actually probably the best photo of it because I actually. Had the next photo you'll see it'll be sitting on the drum, but I hadn't sanded it yet, so this is kind of out of order. But that's that's the best photo probably of it. No, to see. me it looks it looks a little cur curved, or is it, it probably is. flat? Okay, yeah. that's going to go on a drum. So that's even more of a challenge. Well, no, I, no? it was fl it was flat to start with. And then okay. well, when Dave has more done, like Dave can show my picture. I uh, I just have a little. A press that I, I got it wet and then clamped it on a little press overnight that has the right angle. Oh, that's like another wow. jig I made on my CNC. So that's if that were that one, you can see the lines, still the tooling lines. I hadn't sanded it yet here, but that's where it's going to go in the drum. And then I sent another photo of it actually in the drum. Uh, and that's it in the drum. Ah, sweet. Spent an hour or two getting, well, both there's two edges, one on each side, but. My problem, I've been trying to do these badges. I, I like the epoxy a lot, but I can't get them to work on the drum quite right because the drum is round and epoxy is liquid. It wants to run down the sides. So yeah, I decided this one, I was going to make a, a bad, uh, well, it's an inlay, a piece, and then I'll cut a pocket on the drum and then force that in there. And then actually the black on the outside, that's that's not epoxy. That is the black uh, super glue. And I use the, uh, hmm. what's the spray you do, the hardener, the... Um, the kicker. Or, wow. Yeah. So I did two or three layers of that just like just right. And it it came out really nice. I, I'm really happy with that. 
the funny thing is, you know, the time I spent just making these badges, a good drum maker would have made a drum just that time I made the one badge. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good financial venture for me. I spend way too much time. But it looks <laughs> so nice. There's an expression out there. I think it's uh, perfect. I see perfection is the enemy of excellent. And I think I've had excellent things in the past, and I keep on. No, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. I keep redoing stuff, and but, yeah, but yeah, I'm really happy with that. Okay, yeah, that I don't looks. Understand that's why cool. everybody, all the uh, like big uh, um, musical acts, don't have your drums? Because they are uh, just gorgeous. Because <laughs> because Ludwig pays them a lot of money to use their drums. That's probably the big reason. Oh, but I um, there's actually a local artist that has a big fundraiser every year at Christmas time that. We're talking to them. We might, they might donate one of my drums, or well, they'll they auction off the equipment after the show they have, and we've been talking, so they might use one of my drums for that, and then they'll auction off for a local charity. So, I'm hoping that'll give me some exposure, maybe. But actually, can you send the, put the camera on me real quick, Dave? Yes, I can. That's I talked about. That's got a. It's okay. not flat. I just did a molding tool path, a thirteen and. Seven eighths degree circle, and then I got a the other side, the flat part, and I again I just wet the badge, put it in here, and clamp, put a clamp on it, and clamp down, and the next morning it had formed. I don't know, steam bent. Basically, right. it's, not, it's not hot, but yeah, and that it's the right mm -hmm. shape, and it conformed the drum, and and the, the, right the, the resin bends fine. Yes, as you're doing yeah. it. Okay, okay, not now little. hold hold that uh, badge up again, if you would, Rob. That's oh, the, that's Walls. pretty thick, isn't it? The, the badge itself. Oh, actually, well, I trimmed it down. Um, that was thick when I started, but then I flipped it over and skimmed off the bottom. It's only point uh, ten thousand point one. Or I'm oh, sorry. Okay, because I but you're, you're bending it when it's that thick, though, right? Or no? No, no. I, I skim the back and then get it so it's yeah point one inch. Oh, okay. And then okay. I and then I then I bend it after that. So it's it's very malleable at that point. Okay. I, I, I went when you held that up. I'm like, man, he really bending that. That's pretty. Sad. Well, this, no, this is the mold. Yeah, this isn't the badge. The, it goes in. The badge goes here. Then I put this on top. Oh, okay. I thought that this, other piece was your badge. No, no, no. This is just okay. my mold, so I can force it into that shape. Okay, then, I got you. I got. You. Then when it dries, it comes out that shape. Okay. Wow. That looks very cool. I am digging that. Yeah, I, like I say, I spent probably two, three weeks on this. And I, in the past, I've done some drums where I put the epoxy right on the drum, and I try either thickeners to get it to work better, or I have the drums rotating the whole time so it works. And yeah. I've had some luck with that, but this is so much better. And plus, you can't see that lug kind of on the left, that bump sticking way up there. That's um, walnut, too, so it'll match that. Mm -hmm. I've got the drum itself is um, myrtle, and I've got lugs that are pumping out that are walnut, so it'll, it ties in real well. That's that should be nice in the end. Okay. Alrighty, let me go ahead and click over to this next one. And that's actually the same piece of walnut. <laughs> it is my in-laws' 60th anniversary this week coming up. I'll be, in fact, I'll be there in Nebraska next week, so I will miss the show next week. Okay, and and that's with a uh, Jenny. What's the downcut? Sixty. Um, uh, the groovy Jenny. Groovy Jenny. Yes, I used that for the first time on that one. Okay. Again, worked perfect. I love that bit. Yeah, I and again, this one I don't oh, say anything bad about them. They are yeah. pretty awesome. And I did put um, just uh, poly on this one before I carved, not for the chip out reason, but when I pour the black epoxy on, I didn't want it to bleed in, so. Mm -hmm. This text is not even close to as small as the other one. This is nice and big. Uh -huh. okay. And that's just the black flooding. You can kind of see through there if you look real careful. Yeah, uh, you can make it out if you look close. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah. yeah, not a lot to see there. And then here it is before I've done anything. I just well, skimmed it and a little bit of sanding. That's sharp. It, it came out nice. Yeah. I, I'm really liking this epoxy. I need to do it more. It's really sharp. And that's it with a couple layers of. That's where it is today. I've still got to put one or two more layers of poly and buff it out a little bit. But it's. Yeah. Now, what size? What's the overall dimensions of this approximately? I think it's 16 wide and like eight and a quarter tall, I think. Okay. I have to look, but that's. 
it's as wide as I can get out of that piece of wood. I, <laughs> okay. There, there was not much excess on the edge when I cut it out. But, and I used just an eight or a, a router bit to round the edges, just on the on the router table. That's not CNC on that part, but <clears throat> that, looks that, that is really slick. I like that. Yeah. And I'm sure Leroy and Janet are going to love it. They, yeah, <laughs> she'll. Yeah. Yeah, she loves my any woodworking I do for him. Okay. Let's yeah, see. they'll they'll be they'll be it'll be an emotional day. There's a lot of stuff going on for their sixtieth. She'll yeah. there'll be some tears, I'm sure, of joy. Yeah. All right. I think that was the last picture. Yep. So appreciate you sending those in, Rob, and I'm so glad you were able to make it. Um. Because my explanation didn't work too well. You can do the talk. <laughs> okay, looks like we got some other questions over there. Let's head over there and uh, let's see. What's Clyde saying? He says, "Tired of taking my thumb drive out to the garage. Now I have FileZilla sending the G code files to the Pi in the garage." Okay, cool. I haven't used, I used to use that FileZilla at the last company I worked for back when I had a real job. So that's been a long time. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty nice way to be able to, you know, move stuff back and forth and, and such without having to um, physically you know, plug it in and unplug it and all that stuff. Yeah, true. Yeah. That's how I've always believed you keep your. CNC computer isolated, so I I use a thumb drive, but yeah. it'll be easier. Quite I'm awesome. a thumb drive guy too. I I just don't uh, don't want to put it on the on the network. Um, Clyde also made a comment there not too long after that about how uh, he and his wife have been the COVID fog. So uh, get well soon, buddy. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, get well. Oh yeah, I've been well, through that twice now in the past few years. So. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Another question here. Larry Brown says, what type and process of stain do you guys like and why? Rob, do you want to start with that since you just. Uh, sure. Um, the exact answer, it depends. <laughs> I, I've used gel stain for a few things and some um, dyes. When I don't want to penetrate the wood at all, like if I'm going to do carved text or something like that. I do not want it to penetrate very penetrate. So gel stain works the best probably. Yeah. And then dye doesn't penetrate as far as the other oil based ones, I think. But um general finishes, I love their gel stain. They're a little more expensive, but they're good. And then minwax for other ones. So that's what I got. <laughs> yeah. I'll the gel stains myself, uh when I do uh, text on text and stuff like that, I use I use gel stains. Pretty cool with that. But I use mo uh, liquid I I go back and forth. I, I I very seldom use the stains that I have. I use the uh, what the heck is it called? Danish oil. I use a lot of Danish oil and yeah. stuff. And uh, I just set it out and I just coat it with that stuff. Gets into every nook and cranny. Just the natural or the colored yeah, ones? Yeah, mo most of the time it's just a natural. Me too. I have a walnut, but I, I, I don't think I've even used it yet. But I, I like the natural. It really brings out the, the wood. I've used the walnut a few times, and it's it's good. It, it, it's very even. A lot of dyes or stains, they get blotchy if you're not, if, depends on the wood, if it's not, if you don't yeah. pre-treat it and stuff. And I've, right. I think the Danish oil was pretty good about not being blotchy. It's nice and even, so I yeah. like that. Yeah, I've used the Danish oil a, a bunch of times, and I, I like it because it's just simple. You just wipe it on and yeah. wipe it off. <laughs> yeah. um, a, a lot of the times, though, I use the um, the Verithane. The, it's the stain that has the poly yeah. mixed in with it, and I kind of like that. It, it's not usually nearly as dark as what, you know, if you just get that color, but, uh, um, but it, it does a good job. Um, when, I, when I, I was working on a uh, um, uh, redoing my wife's uh, laundry area, 
and uh, stained the uh, um, like a weathered gray. Uh, and what I ended up doing was putting the just the regular weathered gray stain down and doing that. And then I would put a top coat of the one that had the poly in it too, just mm -hmm. to make it a little bit different. So yeah, yeah. And I, I use the Minwax pretty much, um, unless it's on sale. Whatever's on sale or Minwax. Hi, <laughs> yo, cheapy. Yeah. Whatever they got it all. <laughs> oh, what, what about you? You have a favorite uh, finish? I don't stain that much. I use the uh, either use a wipe on poly or or a tongue oil, but uh, I don't use stains that much. Yeah. I Which usually, wipe on, oh, sorry. Which wipe on poly do you use? Uh, Minwax. Okay. I've been using General Finishes Armor Seal. I really like it, too. It, it's clear, I've heard that that's really good. That, that's good stuff. A lot of times I'll make my own just 50% uh, uh, Minwax polyurethane and 50% mineral spirits and, mm. and make my own just because I'm cheap. <laughs> Frugal. No, the frugal. frugal. Well, I, the thing is, if you if you buy the the tin of it, usually the cap will stick on or it'll go bad before you use it all up. So this way, I can use just whatever I need at the time, and just I mix up what I need and I use it, and then I don't have a lot of waste. Okay, I've got to tell a story now. <laughs> I bought a whole <laughs> gallon of the general finishes, and I bought. A big plastic bags basically that have a screw on top and it was like 10 bucks but i bought a gallon of that general finishes you saved a lot of money by doing that and then i just take the cap off take out what i, what I want and put in a little cup and then i squeeze the air back out and put the cap back on air never touches it and it lasts a long time really because before i tried those things the, the cans and like i say the air gets in there and it gets thicker and whatever just on amazon and there was so i I searched it that way, but then I found somebody else had recommended. For, it was actually for to carry booze. I think it was a little <laughs> thing. It was the exact same bag and fifty percent cheaper. And I think I spent ten bucks to get like five or six bags that had the caps on. Hmm. That's a good. I just thought a good uh, idea. Yeah. Yeah, it keeps it air out, and it's it lasts a long time. I, <laughs> Has anybody ever used those? Uh, lids that you can get from Rockler that have the stir thing in it that's supposed to mm -hmm. be able to keep your finish stirred up and it's supposed to seal it. It's a, a mixer of some kind. It's got a little crank on the top and then it's got like a syrup release to pour it out and it stays on the on the can all the time like a quart can or a gallon can. And mm -hmm. I wondered how well those seal. Hmm. I haven't seen any of those. Uh, like Rob, uh, idea, uh, Brian uh, uh, Kidder. Uh, I think that's right, yeah. yeah. Okay. But somebody else is marketing for yeah. finishes, but they're the exact same bag. At least the photos look like the exact same bag. They're buying them from the same place yeah. and reselling them. But yeah, I'm, I give it a 10 out of 10. I, I really like that. And I'm just about to finish my last bag up, so I've had it over a year, and the finish is still good. That's uh, I know when you buy total boat varnishes, it comes in a bag and you can oh. squeeze the air out of it and then put the cap back on. That's yeah, I didn't know you could buy anything like that. That's I probably would have bought it at some point. I because <laughs> I use a half ounce every time I put a layer on and stuff, and it's yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm looking at that. It's a uh, rockler mix, rockler mixing mate. That's pretty yeah. slick, actually. And some of the some of the comments on there said they've left it on for a couple of years, and the finish is, has stayed good. So, mm, but like like Rob says, though, air is the killer of it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Michelle uh, sent you a question or statement. Okay, I get to it here in just a second. I'm over on the question thing, so I don't see his. I'll thing put it over there. Um, Hagen Wizard says, "Sorry for asking late. Does the person who made the table saw cover workbench 
have any plans available? That would be Lou Thomas. Lou, do you have any plans drawn up for that or anything? That's uh, usually what happens when you show pictures or something. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get the file or the plans or yeah. whatever it is? So we'll wait and see if Lou uh, comes back with a comment on that. Uh, um, while you're back. waiting, while you're waiting for that, uh, would uh, we should uh, um, recognize Bob P. Uh, thanks, Bob. Uh, oh yeah, Bob P. With Bob. the uh, super, super chat. chat. I guess that's what that is. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate you. Appreciate it very much. Uh, let's was see. There, where was it? Is there a question? Yeah, there it was. I, I go uh, back and Rob forth. <laughs> yeah, for that ahead, one, Bob. actually. I actually, you know, you get flex and you get the, you show that edge from the drill, the bit. I actually used a bowl bit and had it like a 20% step over just because I did. I didn't want to have any lines, have to worry about sanding lines out. But I know if my machine was perfectly trammed, but then you still get flex and stuff. So I let it run slow with a bowl bit so there's no sharp edges and let it run. But I also use an inch and a quarter for when I'm skimming big things, so I'm not worried about get that last coat for finish or last last step to get a clean finish but mm -hmm. okay uh let's see marcel i think this is what you were talking about marcelo says dave i sent you some photos in an email of inlay boards that you could show when did you send them marcelo are you talking about just now um because i usually don't check email with this computer uh if you sent them you know another day or something i probably have them somewhere uh, let me look and see if there's anything on here anyway if, wherever whenever I, okay now we got some more pictures coming in here i'll probably have to show these other ones on another uh another show here he said he sent them to you four weeks ago. Four weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. I thought he said he told me he had done that. Okay. Well, I'll have to look. It's unless it went in my spam folder because I keep it cleaned out. But if it's in my inbox, which it could very well be, uh, I'll just have to scroll way down about four weeks ago, it looks like. But I'll, I'll I'll do a search for your name and I'll, I'll be able to find them that way. But I don't ha I don't have anything on this computer right here. This is an old one that's barely good enough to run this uh, this live stream. So, but we'll find them all. And anybody else that's that sent photos just now, uh, we'll you know we'll get those on next week. Uh, let's see. Few more questions here. Tim Kelly says, "Rob, do you ever worry about that big of a piece of wood cupping?" Yes and no, but that one—I'm not worried about that one. Eight inches wide. I mean, the grain—it only cups with the grain. I don't know how to say it, but the long distance doesn't bother me at all. And I haven't had any problems being eight inches wide like that, but. I do badges sometimes that are up to 24 inches, and those I get I, I get nervous about. But I always put finish on the front and back at the exact same time. And that seems to be the big deal. You put add moisture to one mm -hmm. side, not the other. That's when I've had the most it. problems. So I always, I yeah, I put the back and the front, put a layer of poly on at the exact same time to seal it, and that's mm -hmm. helped a lot. And that's pretty much the limit of my problem. And I, when you don't do that, I've had some serious warp that <laughs> ruined the project so that seems to be my solution it, it's is it 100 perfect probably not but it's it's good enough for it's woodworking it's not nasa so <laughs> okay of course lots of stuff i have is pretty dry to start with i yeah. i'm in arizona have, except for right you now have a, get... do you have a moisture meter and and do you check your material no but usually i buy something and i use it months later and okay. Arizona okay. is so dry. Yeah. 
except for this week. <laughs> it's rained a lot in the past week. But <laughs> a lot. Okay. Ray Dixon says, I'm looking for a good outdoor clear finish for house signs. Any suggestions? Uh, I use uh, the, let's see, do I have it out here? No. If I get up, I'll probably knock something down. No. I use that. I think it's called the Helmsman or something. It's the spar urethane stuff. And that's the best stuff. I've seen. That's what I put on those dog bowls because dogs slobber all over them and stuff. But that's the only thing I can think of. I don't know if anybody else has. I was curious about that, though. Does that uh, darken the image or, or does it leave it clear? No, well, it's. A... I've, I have used it, but I haven't seen the after effects because it's not around me anymore. Yeah, it's it's a it's a clear. Okay. I've used that before and there's. There's two out there. There's water-based and oil-based, and I like the water-based because it's easier. It probably doesn't give quite as pretty a finish, but it's so much easier. It's because one's got a metal top, it's oil, and one's got a rubberized top, it's water. And here in Arizona, the Walmart sells the water-based, and Home Depot sells the oil-based. Okay. But I like that helmsman. But Todd yeah, said it darkens uh, a little bit. My buddy Jim, he made a, uh, he got some birch plywood and made a backstop, uh, not a, a backboard for a basketball goal for his grandson. But it's at, it's at my buddy Jim's house. And that's what he used. He put a bunch of coats of that spar urethane and that thing still looks good. And it's been, it's been outside in the weather for several years now. Uh, let's Marcello see. says July 3rd, Dave. July 3rd. So just to put it in your back of your mind. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll, well, yeah. Well, I'll search it by his name if he's, if he sent some. That's the only way I can find stuff on there is uh, search the name. But I'll, I'll, if they're in there, I'll find them. If not, I'll uh, let you know during the coffee session or something and see if I can get you to send them again or something. Uh, let's see. JR says, who checked in before walking I did, in? I brought this up. Out, just in time for some hashtag little B action. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, if you think about this now, so he checked in, dropped a super chat, and then went to dinner, and then came back. <laughs> yeah. JR is the man. He is, isn't he? <laughs> he is the man and we've got uh man we've got a bunch of folks watching tonight uh yeah. i guess they're all wanting that uh little b and i haven't shown it again but i guess they've, they've seen it because this is what the hashtag you need to put into the uh thing here into the chat and it will be uh, captured by the uh giveaway tool and uh, we'll be doing that here in just a minute yeah it looks like we've got 78 entries in there so far so hashtag little b if you want in on that drawing um i guess that's all i got has anybody else got anything they want to talk about or i guess we got all the questions um Dwayne actually has a, a new question here for uh, uh for rob I'll bring it up here. Oh, I'm sorry. I clicked about the same time you did, I think. I'll see. Fight with you. I have a touch plate, but I don't always use it. How I do epoxy or anything when I'm going to color like that. I do the same thing when I'm coloring v carved text. I set the starting depth to be 100 10 thou. I talk like a, not like an engineer. It drives people nuts. I say a, a, ten, uh, a hundredth is a 10 thou. Sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I said to go, I always have to stop and think. Wait a minute, what's he? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a I'm a ten thou guy. Yeah, so I said it to to start the starting to a little deeper. So I intend on skimming off a hundredth ten thou on top when I do it. So if I use a touch plate, then I can touch it, and then then I have to reset it to be to start a hundredth ten thou below that. Then so I sometimes used to do the paper trick for that one. And then I tell it I set it as minus point. Zero one when I'm setting the depth 
manually. So yeah, either way, but you that's my secret. I always, I plan on skimming off 10 thou off the top when I do it. So I, I carve a little deeper when I start. Yeah. Yeah. I know that when I did the, uh, that sign that hangs in the back of my office, the hobby CNC with Dave sign, when I did that, I basically just set it for zero which would be the top of the material because when you pile a epoxy on there, you know, it's kind of sticking up. And then I ended up going down, I did that. And then there was a still a few places where it had soaked in a little bit. And that's all I went was another 10 thousandths. And that took yeah. Care. Creep up on it. That's yeah. Yeah. It doesn't take much at all. Yeah. I don't do the first pass. I, I do creep up on it. So. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got that one done. Okay, I guess that's it. Any other questions out there, folks? We're going to wrap this one up. Nope, that was it. Yeah, Ronald uh, makes a good point. He's uh, all these folks in here. You can hit that thumbs up. You know, it doesn't cost nothing. Oh, I'm bad. I forgot to do that. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all righty. Well, I guess if there's no other questions, we will... Uh, Go ahead and get on with this drawing here. I'll add this to the stream. I would like to say you're welcome to the people that said thank you. It jumped up uh, to 83. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate the appreciate the thumbs up, appreciate the uh, super chats, and just really appreciate y'all coming and hanging out with us and asking lots of good questions and. Uh, I guess we're, uh, looks like we're staying at 83. So let's, uh, let's do this. What do you say? Hold it. Hit it, buddy. I'm looking for a new necklace. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, everybody. Here oh. he all right. Congrats, Barry. You'll have a uh, little B, or a, let's see, it's a one eighth tapered ball nose. And if you haven't watched this before, which I think you have, make sure you contact Cody at www.cadencemfgdesign.com. And a big shout out to Cody because he does this stuff every single week. He's been riding the, riding the train with us now for a long time, and I really appreciate him. He's awesome. Yeah. It's an awesome thing he does, uh, giving away one of these every week. I got the easy part. I just push the button. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one who has to do the... Uh, the other stuff. So congrats, Harry. Uh, I think you're going to really, really like that uh, tapered ball nose. If, if it's anything like the other ones, it's going to be a good one. So, all right. Well, I guess we'll wrap this up. Uh, I don't have anything else. Uh, like I said, we'll, uh, I'll be posting some stuff. I know people just don't want to hear about Christmas stuff, but I'll be posting some stuff about the Christmas challenge. And this will be, I think, the seventh year, I think, for that. I have had an entry every single year so far. So, yeah, I, I have no idea what I'll do, but I'm going to do it again this year. I don't know what I'll do yet. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I want to make sure that everybody knows that it's it, even it's called the Gatton CNC Christmas Challenge because of me, not because of the Gatton CNC. So you don't have to have a Gatton CNC. You can use any kind of CNC. And, you know, as we've talked about, it can be a CNC 3D printer, diode laser, uh, CO2 laser, fiber laser, you know, all the all the different kinds of three, uh, a mismatch of them. there is, you know, uh, if you want to do something on a rotary axis, uh, CNC or laser or whatever, that's fine. You know, it's just got to be a Christmas themed project that you film and shoot a uh, a short five minute youtube video 
and uh, and then send me the link and we put it in the playlist and and go from there uh, but uh, anyway hope we get some uh, hope we get lots of entries this year question i was thinking of doing a new year's theme project is it a holidays theme or is it christmas theme well it's always been a christmas theme just because it's called the christmas challenge but you could okay. probably tie into tie new year's into it too i guess because uh you know that's that's what everybody immediately thinks about as soon as christmas morning is over <laughs> they start thinking about how they're going to tie one on and uh, <laughs> next paid holiday <laughs> all those uh resolutions that they don't keep and all that kind of stuff so but anyway all right i guess we'll get out of here i see we're uh dropping like flies anybody uh, got anything else they want to say uh sean thanks for uh thanks for coming here and don't forget if you want to uh, get the stl files for the for the little hold down stuff he uh, showed earlier uh, the link is in the live chat here and russ you got anything you want to no so you big been kind of quiet tonight i'm good okay all right ryan thank you for uh coming on you got anything uh any parting words i would just like to thank mrs russ for letting russ participate tonight yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. by the way i i, I show I this every know. week this is uh this is not <laughs> Teresa made for me several several years ago now i guess but that's yeah. what that's what I, how i stay yeah. cool out here with the <laughs> with the alabama tumbler thing so all right rob you got any new videos coming out you want to talk about I should, but I don't. I've got, I've recorded quite a bit. I've, this drum I'm doing right now, my plan is to do like four or five, a series of four or five for it. So I've been okay. recording a lot of video, but I've not started compiling anything yet at all. But okay. Well, if this, if you that badge already, way, that badge yeah. way video number two of that series, if, if it works okay. out like I think it will. If you're not already subscribed to Rob, you need to subscribe mm -hmm. to his channel and, and check out all his awesome drums. By videos. chance. I'm at 970 right now. I need 30 more people to hit a thousand. So I would, that's my goal is hit a thousand oh, yeah. subscribers. Close. <laughs> I'm getting close. Yeah. Come on, 90 people that are still watching. There's 30 <laughs> of you that don't belong on his channel yet. Yeah. Check him out. It's, and about uh, 89 of you that don't belong to mine. So go on. <laughs> go on. Are you getting close too? No, I'm, I'm over, but I don't, oh, okay. nobody ever watched. I, I, I have 12 people watching a video that I do, so they're horrible. Well, yeah. For some reason, my video feed, suddenly I've got a chaining of fuel pump noise, a chaining something on an F-150. I thought, why does they keep showing up in my feed? And I looked at it, oh, it's Ryan's. <laughs> Not really CNC related. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. I'll get it okay. in my head. All right, thing. Paul, what, you got uh, anything you want to share with us before we go? No, but this i this coming week i'm gonna go beyond good intentions and i'm gonna do something okay we're gonna hold you to it next week <laughs> a full report uh we want to see some pictures of some t-track mounted and well i don't know if i'd go that far but <laughs> <laughs> it might take them out of the box okay. you know i might get that horizontal surface cleaned off so at least i can do something yeah Okay. Uh, All right. well, thanks everybody for uh, for hanging in here with us tonight. And our, uh, our uh, resident be back. I'll probably have some something. more photos of some kind to show if I find uh, find those. And then somebody, some folks have just sent some while we were sitting here tonight. So we'll show some more photos last night. And I might might have something else to run back here next week. I've been uh, been thinking about something might. Uh, might have another little project to run. We'll, we'll see about that. All right, everybody, we are getting out of here. Have a good weekend. Be safe. And we will see y'all next week. <laughs>